I'm Dragos and in this video we're going to take a look at Docmos. This is an open source collaborative wiki for your documents and software. So with the help of this tool you can create documents easily, share with your team, restrict access to this document only for your team members, create groups and things like that. This is an alternative to the Notion which is more simple then Notion and in this video we're going to see exactly how you can install it with the help of Docker and Docker Compose. Let's go and check uh, this tool. And uh, in here the, you, you see their website. In here you'll have all the details including with the documentation for this tool. And I've already installed it and the tool is in here. You see that it has a simple interface and right now it's installed on my uh, subdomain ducks.bidoz.com and uh, like this we're going to install it in this tutorial with docker so you can uh, see how you can uh, test it and use it with docker for uh, your team and this is the interface in here you have the dog most uh, menu and in here you have the workspace settings for instance and in here if you check the workspace setting you have the general here you have the name here you have the members that you can uh, add you can invite members you can add email SMTP to this uh, application so emails can be sent. You can create groups, you can create additional spaces if you want. Right now I have just two for, for test. And in here you have your profile, the account things, you can change your password. In here you have the preferences, basically this, it has a light and a dark mode. So you see in here that you can change between, it has also a full page width like this. Let me go to home and in here you see that right now this is looking like this. It is to have the full width of the of the page, and basically this is the interface that will allow you to add uh, different uh, pages in here. Let me switch this thing back so to have it as it was. Okay, preferences. Let me put it like this. Let me move to home. So yeah, like this. Let's open the page. So in here you see that I've created a test page and in here you can add the hash run titles, images, videos, tables and the things like that. Basically this is the list you can add to do's in here, bullet points, numbers, codes, code, images, toggle block, call out you can add mat in line mat block so these are the blocks that you can use and besides this in here you see that you have some comments that you can add so for instance if you want to comment this thing you can just uh, go in here and you can uh, type a comment for for this and the others can see can reply to this comment and uh, so so on and in here you can uh, create uh, different things so you can add for instance a different page these pages are also nested so you see in here that it will take the structures like this. You can import pages, you have the space settings in here and you can uh, have the settings in here with the name description. You can add members and uh, yeah, things uh, like that. And yeah, it has like a simple interface but uh, it's nice and uh, easy to, to use. And uh, this is a good alternative for instance notions or other wikis in the past I've created a tutorial about outline also this is a very powerful wiki which is more complex than uh, dogmost and you can even check this tutorial if you want something more complex but in this video we're going to go and see exactly how we can install it in here we have the installation tutorial with all of the things that we need and the first thing that uh, you will need to have is to have a vps server where you will host this you'll need to have Docker and Docker Composed installed and uh, to be able to have this tool working through Cloudflare tunnels you need to have set up the Cloudflare tunnels on your uh, installation. I've already created a detailed video with all of these things that I will link into the description and uh, after you have this you will uh, have the Docker Compose file. So in this area I've created a Docker Compose file with all of this, these things. We're going to go through these things and we're going to explain them. So in here you have the services and in here I've created a Docmost container I have added the latest image to be used, so every time when you deploy this, it will use the latest image. I've added a user in here, root. I've added this because I'm running all of the Docker containers under root, and if you don't add your user root in here, then you will not be able to load the images to the folder, to this folder that I've created in here, dogmost, because it will not have the necessary 
right? So that's why I've added the user root in here. It has a basic health check in here that will check to see if the application is up. It's using the port uh, 3000 like the app it's using. And this depends on the Dogmost DB, which is a Postgres database and the Dogmost Redis, which is, which is the Redis database. In here, you have some environment variables. You can add even more variables. For instance, you can add your uh, SMTP details in here to send emails. But for this, I've just added the app URL. Basically, this is the subdomain that we're going to use. I've added this into an environment variable that we're going to, to set the app secret. Basically, it's a long string that uh, can be generated uh, from, uh, from OS with this command. Let me show it. So you just run this command. It will generate a secret for you. And after, let's go and see. I have the database URL with users, password, and uh, everything is stored into into the variables. So to not have the password in here and to not need to modify this file. And in here you have the port. So in here you see that you have the 5031, uh, 5, the port to the server and 3000 is the application. And it will restart if it's not uh, stopped. And the other things that I have in here is the Dogmos DB. This is a Postgres database with Postgres 16, the Alpine. It also has a check. It has a volume in here that will be stored locally. And he, this is for the database. In here, you have the environment variables with username, password, database. And in here, you have the Dogmos Redis. And in here, you have the Redis 7.2 Alpine. And I've just added a health check in here. So we can see when this is not uh, is not starting okay you can also use the restart on failure if you want like this i've added the unless stopped in here so it's it's up to you and right now let's go and copy this and we are going to go to dogja and set it up but if you don't have dogja you just uh, create a uh, folder you can run docker compose if you want with this and let me open dogja and in here i will hit create and I will put dogmost in here and in here I will put the docker compose file and I will let the network to be created for this. The next thing that we are going to, to need to do is to go and uh, configure our environment file with the, all the details. Let me put it in here. Okay, like this. I've added the environment in here you have the a app URL, you have the database and other things. Let me put the equal sign in here because like this should be in this area. Okay. And then we will hit save for this. And right now we can go and start this. So right now the everything will be pulled and the application will uh, will start. So right now everything is starting. You see that the Dogmos DB has started. Uh, Dogmos is starting. Dogmos Redis will start also. Okay. And right now everything should be, should be up and running. Let's wait for this also to start and be healthy like it's shown in, in here. Okay. So everything is started right now. Next, we're going to need to go and create our uh, tunnel to this. But again, if you're not using DocJ, you can go and uh, start this with the Concompose up minus D and uh, check everything. I prefer DocJ because it's easier to, to use. So let me go and copy the URL for this with the port. And in here I have the tunnels. This is our my uh, Docker Cloud server and I will add, add a public host name. And so in here, I will add uh, this to a subdomain. For this, I will just use docs2 and I will put bdos.com. You can choose whatever subdomain you want. And in here, you can push the, put the HTTP type like this. And in here, you add your uh, URL. Basically, this is the IP address. You can even use localhost with the port that you've chosen. And then you will hit save. And this should create our uh, subdomain that it's pointing to our, uh, our dogmost. And in here, let's go and open this. 
And in here you see that right now I am on the subdomain domain and the first thing that you will be prompted to do is to create a workspace with a username and the password. And in here I will put the Windows workspace. Your name I will put also like this. Email, I'll put my email, I'll put a password. And right now the workspace is set up. This is the general workspace that it is uh, set up. So in here you see that uh, you have the general workspace. You have the space settings that you can change in here. Name, slug. And the other things, uh, you can go and the uh, workspace settings in here, for instance, in spaces. And in here you can create a new space. And right now we have the other workspace. You can create a new page in here. You can add your things in here. And make your necessary configurations. Again, if you want to enhance this with SMTP, you can uh, do that. In here, I've let a documentation. So basically, this is, all, uh, this is the environment variables from their documentations. You see in here that these are the things that we've uh, We've added with the app URL secret and the database URL. And in here uh, you have the storage driver that uh, was locally, so you can change this. You can use uh, the S3 if you want to store your details like videos and photos. The SMTP things, you can go and add the, the details. So for the SMTP thing, you can go and in instance and in the application in here, you add your things. In here, the SMTP details, and you can store them in here for the server, for instance, and you can put the password for the user in the environment details to be secure. So you can add the SMTP emails to this, so uh, an email to be sent when you add uh, users and uh, things like, like that. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, you, you like what you have seen. I will let some uh, playlist at the end with some other self-hosted applications that you can try and uh, see if uh, it will help your business. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.